So this morning, we're going to talk about the faithfulness of God. In many ways, in these past two years, have been challenging, but God is faithful. And he take, he take care of me, and he's taking care of you, and he is going to take care of all of us, our family. Taking care of us doesn't mean we got everything what we want and how we want it. We had physical grief and losses in our church with uh, some very faithful members in these past two years. But we are still moving forward by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want to say, as first of all, is thank you to all of you for your love and support in the past these two years. And I want, I, I, and I ask all of you to do continuously like you did in the past two years. And I'll be honest with you, a few times, I thought two years would be enough, and, but every time I tell my wife, she would say, we're not done yet, honey. We're not done yet. God has still planned for us here in Auburn, Washington. So here we are, we're still here. Until God wants us to be, we'll be here. And I was reminded from Philipp Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Paul tells us not to worry about anything. Instead, he said, pray about everything. Sometimes we try to fix ourselves our problem. We try to do, we work so hard, we, we try to go around and do and do different way and fix the thing that we can't even have a control on it. Instead of bringing to God and laying out, Lord, here I am, I can't do anything. Help me, God. We try to do our, ourselves instead of pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Sometimes we forgot to bring to God our concern and to thank him for what God has done for our life. He has done many things for you and for me. If I ask you today, uh, what is the most you feel that God is faithful to you, everybody will have a story to share. I have many things to talk about from the Bible as well. I can talk about Abraham, David, and Daniel, and, 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 and all the list on and on that I can talk about. The faithfulness of God. We can talk about the series the whole year long, one by one from Old Testament to New Testament. There is many things that we can talk about, for our, in, for, uh, especially for our life. But is God faithful to you? This morning we're going to talk about this, the faithfulness. I may not be able to cover everything from the scripture, but I'll try my best to give you this a uh, few minutes. 30 minutes or so. So pay attention. In a world where promises are often broken and love fail, we find solace in the unwavering faithfulness of our Heavenly Father. So let's turn our Bible. Lamentation chapter 3, verses 22 to 24 where we are reminded of the steadfast love and faithfulness of our living God. If you are able, would you please stand with me as we read the word of God. Let's read together. 
The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. And together we say thanks be to God. You may be seated. Some translations said, I will wait. I will wait in him. But this I read from New Living Translation. I will hope in him. A little background of the book of Lamentation. Lamentation is written by the prophet Jeremiah. Prophet Jeremiah wrote soon after the fall of Jer Jerusalem, around 586 BC. In that time, Jerusalem had been destroyed by Babylon, and the people in Jerusalem had been killed and taken and taken to captive. Jeremiah is written in this rhyme and style of ancient Jews' funeral song. Jeremiah was grieving because what happening in Jerusalem, his tears flow from a broken heart. As God's spokesperson and a prophet, Jeremiah knew what lay ahead for Judah, his country, and Jerusalem, the, cap the capitals and the city of God. God's judgment would fall and destruction would come. And Jeremiah wept. His tears were not self-centered mourning over personal suffering and loss, but it was the love for his people. Verse 1, if we go back verse 1, we can see the metaphor of rod, R-O-D, to express the rod of God. The rod is a part of a separate equipment. But kings saw themselves as a separate of the people, and the rod becomes stylish as a scepter. Psalm 45, 6 says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepters of your kingdom. And also Psalm 125, 3 says, The scepters of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous. For then the righteous may use their hand to do evil. For the sheep, the road is an article's Excuse me, <clears throat> of comfort. And Psalm 23, verse uh, 23, 4 is this very famous psalm. We can see that even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David said, even the darkest valley, the darkest time in my life, I will not fear. I will not worry about it because your rod and the staff comfort me. But for the wild and animals or enemies, it is a weapon, a weapon to be feared. We can see in Exodus chapter 21, verse 20, it is used to be slave. And, and also we can see in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15, is talk about the rod is to discipline to the children. It can be there for a comforter. It can be for a discipline. It can be for a punishment. Jerusalem should have been comforted by the presence of God rod. But instead, it became an instrument of discipline against the city and against the people. The temple has been destroyed. The king is gone. The people are in exile because of living ungodly life and unfaithfulness. But God is still faithful. 
God is still faithful toward his people. God used this affliction to bring his people back to him with hope. Prophet Jeremiah was crying because the people had rejected their God. The God who had met them, loved them, and shout repeatedly to bless sinfulness of the people would bring them a suffering and ex an extended exile. Jeremiah tear were, were tears of sympathy and, and empathy. Jeremiah's heart was broken with those things that break God's heart. The midst of all those things, God is still faithful. Amen? God is still faithful. So our first point is God's faithfulness in his love. Turning to Psalm 136, 1, we are reminded that his love endures forever. The love of our God is unwavering and unchanging. In a moment of doubt or despair, let us remember that we are held in the embrace of a love that knows no bound. His faithfulness is a beacon of hope in a world filled with uncertainty. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God keeping his covenants of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Also, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 said, If you are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself who he is. It says, the Lord your God is God. He is a faithful God. He cannot deny himself who he is. He is, un he is a, it is a declaration. It is a declaration of a God unchanging reliability and consents, constants presence in our life. A God is a faithful God. A God is God. He is not unfaithful. He cannot deny himself because God is God. Our God is faithful. And his covenants of love to a thousand generations of those who love and God and keep his commandment. See, God was faithful to Abraham. God was faithful to Moses. God was faithful to Aaron, Joshua, and, and he is faithful until today to us. He is unchanging God. He is the same all long, long time ago, and he, was, he is the same today. He is the God that who helped the people of Israel to cross the Red Sea. He is the God that who gave the promised land. He is the, he is the same God today that we worship. Are you faithful in keeping God's commandment in your life? Think about the question. Are you faithful in keeping God's commandment in your life? It's not something that to check the box. Oh, I do this and I do this. I'm fine. I'll be okay. Sin is sin. There is nothing that a big sin and a uh, a small sin, one little sin can become an unfaithfulness to God. The same thing with a big sin. I have a many favorite hymn. I shared it two weeks ago, one, and this one is another one. It's a great, it's thy faithfulness. Written by I'm not going to say the last name because it's hard to say. It's written by Thomas O. Sisholm, I think. He is a minister to the Lord. He said, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. 
There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassion, thy fail not. They fail not as thou hast been. Thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed, thy hand had provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and star in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessing all mine with ten thousands beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I seize. When we wake up in the morning, we see a beautiful sun that coming up and a beautiful blue sky and a beautiful day that the Lord has blessing to us that the new mercies that we see every day that we wake up, we have to be thankful for his faithfulness in our life because God is a God. Who, he is a faithful God. He will do for you. He is when he promised you because he cannot deny himself. And all I have needed, all we have needed is thy hand has provided. That's a beautiful song. If you want to come tonight, we may sing. So I don't know, but I hope so. <laughs> we can just always hope for. What a beautiful song it is. God is faithfulness. You can trust on his faithfulness. You can lean on his faithfulness. You can rely on his faithfulness. You can live in peace in his faithfulness. See, peace is not something that the absence of difficulties. Peace is the midst of your struggling and difficulties that the Lord still gives you peace. That's the peace that the Holy Spirit gives you from the faithful God. And the second is God's faithfulness in his forgiveness. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, we find comfort in, in the assurance that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and judge and will forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. The forgiveness of our God is boundless and unconditional. Let us approach him with contrite heart, knowing that his forgiveness is freely given to all who seek it. Confession is supposed to free us to enjoy fellowship with God. But some people do not understand how it works. They feel so guilty that they confess the same sins over and over again and again. They may have forgotten something. Some other believe that their sins are too big. And, and, and God may not forgive them. They, they said, I'm not deserved. I have to, I did, I did such a thing that God may not forgive me. That's what Satan wants you to put you into paralyze. Hey. You are such a, such, guy, such a man that you did this, you did that. Why are you still worshiping God? Why are you still going to church? Why are you still praying? Why, you, why are you still reading? You are such a person. That's what Satan tried to give us destruction, try to away from worshiping God. But God, there is nothing that he cannot forgive. If God for, can forgive in the last minute when he, when he was crucified on the right side guy, the, the sinner, he just said, 
Lord, remember me when you are in paradise. He said, you will be with me today in paradise. He forgive everything. God just need your humble heart. He did not looking for a perfect human being. He's just looking for you to come to him, to realize who, that we are a sinful. We cannot do anything. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot purify ourselves. There is nothing is too big for God, not for forgive, or there is nothing that he cannot forgive. He is faithful in love and forgiveness. God wants to forgive us. That's, that is why he allowed his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to come down on earth and to cru crucify on the cross. That is for you and for me. If we believe that, God will forgive us our sin. God never leave his people. He's never leave us. But we leave God. We that turn away from God. But God is always willing to accept us if we are willing to return and repent our sin. It's like prodigal son. You know very well the story. He went out. All, he used everything, that the, the money, that his, his person from his father. He used all kind of things. Finally, he said, he, he, he said my father's house has many, many things, many servants, many food, many rooms. Why am I still here traveling and starving? Why am I'm, I not going back to my father's house? As soon as he returned to his father's house, he was preparing himself in his heart what to say to his father. He feels so undeserved. He said, put me into like one of the servants. But what did the father say? Let's celebrate. He called everybody. He announces, probably big announcement. Come on, let's celebrate. I lost this son of mine. Now come back. Let's celebrate. Bring of the, 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 the nicest cow. Let's kill it and celebrate it. This is the faithful God, the faithful Father, who is always willing to accept us, no matter what we do, no matter who we are. He is a faithful to forgive us. Not only God forgive our sin, he also sanctify us through his Son, Jesus Christ. See, as soon as you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, He sanctifies you. Sanctification is the process until we die. When we die, when we'll be with Jesus Christ, we'll be perfect. That the process of sanctification, if you look 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 and 24, it says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, not half spirit, whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who called you is faithful. And he will do it. Can you say amen? The one who called you is faithful. And he will do it. He will sanctify you. He will forgive you. He will bless you. When he said, I will bless you. God is faithful God. He will forgive and sanctify us. Because he is a holy God. And he wants us to be like him. And the third is, God is faithfulness in his promise. Now let's, let's reflect the last, the, the promise of God. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19 said, God is not human, that he should lie. If you say, I never lie in my life, I would say you are already a liar. But the Bible said, God is not human, that he should not lie. Not a human being, that he should change his mind. Our God is faithful to fulfill every promise 
he has met as we nav navigate the challenges of life let us hold fast to us to the assurance that his promise never fail i would like to read a victory uh, sorry a story that i read from brightmedia.org written by bill bright he was an American evangelist and a founder of Campus Crusades for Christ. I study in his seminary. So I heard many preachers also share about this story. The story is about the father, a faithful father. You may also heard about already. One day in Armenia in 1988, Samuel and Daniel send their young son named Armon. So the Armon they sent to the school, Samuel squatted before his son and looked him in the eye. He said, have a good day at the school, son, and remember, no matter what, I'll always be there for you. He hugged his young son and the boy ran off to school. Hours later, a powerful earthquake rocked the area. Building crumbled. Electrical power went out everywhere. People panicked. In the midst of the pande pandemonium, Samuel and Daniel tried to discover what happened to their son. As the day wore on, the radio announced that casualty estimate were in the thousands. People were trapped under beams and rubbles in flattened building. Even school were destroyed. Kissing his wife, Samuel grabbed his coat and headed for the school year. When he reached the area, what he saw brought tear to his eyes. Ermon school was a pile of debris. Other grief stricken parents stood nearby and crying. Samuel found the place where Ermon classroom used to be and began pulling a broken beam off the pile of rubble. He picked up a rock and put it to the other side, then another and another and another. One of the parents looking on asked, what are you doing? Digging, from my, digging for my son, Samuel answered. The man exclaimed, you are just going to make things worse. This building is unstable and try to pull Samuel away from his work. Samuel just asked, are you going to help me? The man's wife shook her head sadly. They are dead. It's no use. Samuel set his jaw and continued digging. As time went on, one by one, the other parent left. Concerned, a firefighter tried to pull Samuel away from the rubbles. What are you doing, he asked. Digging for my son, was the reply. Fire are breaking out. You are in danger. We'll take care of it. Will, will you help me, Samuel asked, without stopping his work. The firefighter instead hurried off to a more pressing emergency, leaving Samuel still digging. All through the night and into the next day, Samuel continued digging his hole, growing larger, parent place flower and pictures of their children or on the room. Soon a, soon a row of furus of young happy faces smile up from the rubble, but Samuel just squirt his shoulder and snatches up a beam, wedging it under a stumbling boulder. He tried to pray it out of the way. Finally, the, the boulder gave a faint help. 
came from under the rubble. Samuel stopped his work and listened. He could hear nothing. He kept digging. The voice came again, Papa, he said. Samuel re re recognized the voice, and he said, Armon. He began to dig furiously. Finally, he could see his young son. He said, come out, son, he said with relief. No, Armon said. Let the other kid out first, because I know you'll get me. Because I know you'll get me. Ch ch child after child emerged until finally, sportering Armon appeared. Samuel took him in his arm. He said, Daddy, I told the other kids not to worry. Armon said confidently, I told them that if you, are, if you were alive, you will save me. And when you save me, they will be saved. You promise you will always be there for me. Fourteen children were saved that day because one father was faithful. How much more faithful is our heavenly father? Whether trapped by fallen debris in, in an earthquake or trapped by life, hardship and struggle, broken relationship, broken marriages, we are never cut off from his love for us. As Jeremiah write, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Father faithfulness saved 14 other children, non-stopping digging out that the, 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 all the pile, the rock, the brick, Joshua chapter 21, verse 45 said, Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel fell. Everyone was fulfilled. Whatever the Lord promised to the people of Israel, He fulfilled. Whatever He promised to us, He is going to fulfill for us as well. Because He is a faithful God. Your spouse may fail you. But God never fell. Your son and daughter may fail you, but God never fell. Your friend may fail you, but our God never fell. He will be always be there for you. If he says, I will be there. We, he, his promise is never fell. He, we can see in Hebrews chapter 13, God said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. Because God is with me. Because God is my helper. God will provide. A few times, I have to live my life in this way. God will provide. Life is not easy. I said many times, people doesn't care after we die how, what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you live, how many million that you have in a bank. But they will remember you, your word, your faithfulness, your attitude, your character, your smile, your friendship. That's what they're going to remember years and years and years. That's what they're going to talk about. Are you faithful to God? And are you faithful to the people that you have friends with? When God fulfilled his promise in the past, he will fulfill in our future also. When he did miracles in the past, in the, in the Bible, he will fulfill today. He will do miracles today also. He will do miracles in the future also. 
And if he heal the sick, he will still heal today. But not in my way, but not in your way, his way. But we just need to, Lord, here I am. Give me peace that I need. Strengthen me. Surround me with your faithfulness. Paul said to the Corinthian, God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says. And he has invited you into partnership with his son Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And Psalm 119 says, your faithfulness continues through all generations. To all generations from all the way to in beginning. From Adam and Eve and Abraham and Moses all until today. His faithfulness is all generations keep going, moving. As we conclude our time together, let us remember the faithfulness of God continuously. Let us anchor our heart in the truth of God's faithfulness. In Lamentation chapter 3, verse 23, as we read, great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. May we walk in the confidence that his faithfulness never waver. And his presence is always with us. His presence is always there for you and for me because he is a faithful God. Let's stand. As I pray, if you want to pray with me from your heart, and if you want to surrender to God, ask him, Lord, I am here. I have many times failed you. I have many times did the thing that I should not be doing. I was unfaithful to you. But Lord, you're faithful to me always. Your promise keep all the time. Like one father, the Samuel. He kept digging and digging. And he heard finally saying, Papa. Think about the word that's Papa. It will hit you into your heart. Amazing, put you into your own life in that situation. God is faithful God. He will not leave you and forsake you. He will come to you. He will be with you. Give you peace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness that never fail. Help us to trust in your promise. Rest in your love and seek your forgiveness. May your presence be guiding light in our life. Lord, be with us today. As we're going to, in a few minutes, we're going to step out from this place, Lord. We're going to face many things in the world. But Lord, help us to remember your faithfulness. And help us to live in that faithfulness, Lord. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen.